we have a differential equation to solve, but we've got V and T on the left and then H on the right. Now H is not a constant, it's changing as the water goes down. So it will depend on the volume or the volume will depend on the height. Um, and therefore we need to slightly modify this. Now, ultimately we're asked for the time taken for the tank to become empty. We're not asked to find V or H. So there's, there's gonna be multiple ways of doing this question. And the way that jumps out to me, though, is to change the differential equation so it's dh by dt. And then when we've got the h, we, we can deal with it. So using the chain rule, dh by dt becomes dh over by dv, dv by dt. And that there is my minus 2h. So it's just a case of working out dh by dv. So it's just a case. It's, there's actually quite a few steps to do now. We're given the volume. So V is equal to one third pi R squared H. But we actually, right, what we could in theory do is make H the subject and differentiate with respect to V. But it's going to be easier to find DV by DH and then do one over that. However, R is also changing because it's a cone. It's like if it's a cylinder, R would just be constant. But R is becoming smaller as it goes down. So we now need to find out the relationship between R and H. But we can do that with a little triangle on the actual cone. So this is the radius. This is the height of the water at some point, And we've got this 30 degree angle. So we can link them together using that. It, we've got tan 30 is opposite over adjacent. So R over H. And therefore R is going to equal H tan 30. You put that in your calculator, tan 30 is actually 1 over root 3. So our volume becomes 1 third pi h squared um, time, let me just write that down. So it's, it's going to be h over root 3, which means r squared is going to be h squared over 3. Okay, that, that makes it a bit easier now to just put it in. So I can just put it in actually. and it's going to become 1 over 9 pi h cubed, right? That is much better. Now I can find dv by dh very quickly. So it's going to become 1 third pi h squared. So that's that bit there. In fact, uh, oh, wait, it's not because it's going to be 1 over that. So it's going to become 3 over pi h squared when I do 1 over that. Therefore, dh by dt will equal, right, this squared will cancel with that's h. So I'm going to get minus 6 over pi h as my dh by dt. Let's just say uh, one thing I've not said yet, and I probably should have done this right at the start, but when t is equal to 0, the depth of the water, that's the height, is going to equal 50. So I've got a condition here that's going to allow me to work out my, uh, my um, integration constant at some point. Right, dh by dt. Okay, so what I am going to do is separate the variables. We have to do this because we can't just integrate with respect to t. h is dependent on t, but yeah, you can't just stick an integral sign around here and, and deal with that. Instead, I'm going to multiply through by h. So it's going to be h times dh by dt equals minus 6 over pi. Uh, over pi. I'm going to leave the constants over to, onto the right. Just seems to make more sense to do that. And now what I can do is integrate both sides with respect to t. Because what happens is, again, using the chain rule, this simply becomes dh. Now, you might be somebody who's been shown to instead times by dt and then just stick an integral sign around it and that's fine M many people do this i just prefer to explain like exactly why it works in any case we get the same an uh, answer here so now i integrate it's going to be a half h squared is equal to minus six this is just a constant so minus six over pi times t plus c remember we had that uh, condition that h is equal to 50 when t is 0. So that means c is going to be 50 squared over 2.
is 1250. So that means that a half h squared is equal to 1250 minus 6 over pi t. And I've got my equation. I, I, don't, I could make h a subject if I wanted or whatever, but I don't need to here. I'm just looking for the time that it takes a tank to become empty. So when h equals 0, 6 over pi t is going to equal 1, 2, 5, 0. I've just rearranged it. And therefore t will equal 1, 2, 5, 0 pi over 6. Now that is the exact answer. But this is like a, a modeling question. So let's write it down to three significant figures. So 1, 2, 5, 0 times pi over 6. And it's going to take 600 and 654.498. And that was seconds, I believe. Does it say anywhere? T seconds. It doesn't ask us to write it in minutes or anything, so I wouldn't worry about that. Just round it to the nearest whole number, 654 seconds. Nice one. I'm just going to quickly talk about two other ways of doing this question. This is from the mark scheme, um, rather than me doing the whole thing. So instead of substituting in for r in our v, like I did up here, I substituted in r squared as h squared over 3. Could have substituted in for h r over tan 30 degrees and got v in terms of r instead of h. And then changed it using the chain rule to dv by, uh, from sorry, to dr by dt. So find dv by dr, d, d, dv by dt, and rearrange that to get dr by dt, okay, which we can, we can get it uh, over here. So then do separation of variables again and find an equation essentially in terms of r. This, this seems less intuitive because when, it, when we're talking about the, uh, you know, the water draining out, it, it just seems to make more sense to look at zero height rather than zero radius. But you, you could do it this way and you get exactly the same answer. And a third way of doing this question is to avoid using the chain rule completely. So this involves substituting in, as before, for r squared, h tan 30 degrees, but then rearranging to make h the subject. Now, see, again, I don't recommend this way. That's why I just went through one way in detail, because you end up with, like, the cube roots of a function. It just, it just becomes more complicated. So you avoid having to find, like, get dh by dt or dr by dt. So you can put it, you can put in for h now and get dv by dt in terms of v and solve for that. But it just, yeah, it's, I guess it's not that messy, but I have seen questions where it just becomes very complicated and using the chain rule would have just made life easier. But it all works out. We instead get the, you know, the, a, a formula for the volume in terms of t. And again, we can set that equal to zero and get exactly the same time. And it should just be noted, once you have a, a formula or any formula, you could rearrange it to get uh, it in terms of r or h or r or v um, by using the original formula. You know, we can go, actually, it's, uh, where has it gone? Like, it, once I've got my formula for h, I could, I could now get it in terms of v using this idea, or I could use the other substitution, the relationship between r and h to get it in terms of r. So that, you know, the three are essentially the same thing, which is, of course, why we get the same answer. Um, but anyway, this is the one I've, I've gone through in detail. Okay, thanks.